What hits me first is the luxuriously large aquarium wall. The aquarium runs farther back to the walls behind the curtains. The aquarium is mostly empty, save for a few decorative rocks, and I'm suspecting at this point, uh, merfolk. A huge golden humanoid figure elegantly floats back and forth from behind the glass. When does this aquarium lead to the sea? Okay, that just looks creepy though. Speaking of creepy, but yeah, just the, the silhouette with like the impression of eyes and a mouth. Realization finally dawns on me. This must be the eel person drawing is implied. She bears a toothy smile at me. I secretly hope it's a friendly smile and not one of those things where like animals bare their teeth and it's, you know, a show of aggression. The act of swallowing suddenly becomes increasingly difficult. With my luck, the aquarium glass could crack at any moment. I can imagine the tombstone already. Here lies Rue, 1961 to 1994. Fish food. We're not gonna talk about this. What is this? What is this? <laughs> With my focus being on the eel person, I walk right into the large Oregon standing in the middle of the room. I bounce back while she remains unfazed. Rue Cherowati. And that is me, I think. Are you or are you not? A large red Oregon, whom I assume to be Nim Gon, scratches her head. Yes, I, I am me, Richard Hawaii. <laughs> her scent rubbed off on me after our collision. Beneath the fancy clone is an unpleasant hint of tar. I count several pieces of jewelry on her person and a thick golden necklace on top of her high, uh, high thread turtleneck. The eel person knocks in the glass once and waves at me. Does this eel person understand us? Can I get like a better view of them? Not that's not just a creepy silhouette. Cause I'm honestly curious what, what the actual like, you know, what they look like. Right. Take a seat. Just standard procedures. Sorry. She smiles at me and makes herself comfortable. Oh. Okay. Cool. Hey. Nimgon sits comfortably at the end of the lo uh, the long lounge. She scrunches her brows while looking over a bunch of document folders. There's a personal laptop computer lying on her desk, a top-end brand. My friend Koa bragged about her being on the waitlist just to order one last month. The eel person floats close to where, to where Nimgan is. Never have I seen an eel person from this distance. She's a bajar, uh, bizarre, <laughs> bajar, fucking get my goddamn consciousness up. She's a bizarre giant fish with curious protuberances on her forehead. Her skin emits a low light, barely visible underneath the brightness of the aquarium. Her permanent smile is branded on her face. She seems relatively harmless, from behind the glass, maybe. Have a seat. Nimgon beams and pats his face next to her. Is it okay to discuss it in front of, um... It occurs to me I don't know how to address the eel person. Oh, her? Nimgon thumbs the eel person with an inquisitive tone. She continues when I nod. That's fine. Morak's mine. Um, yours? She can understand us well. Plus, she does what she wants anyway. Nimgon's mellow voice puts me off. It gives you a different impression of what uh, she would look like. I prefer standing. Right, let's get to it then. You are late. You missed the bus I sent out to you. You didn't answer any of my calls. She emphasizes each accusation with, uh, with authority grunt. The old person knocks on the glass again. This time she shakes her head in disapproval. Nimgon lifts her brows and, uh, and her scowl turns, uh, quickly turns into a smile. Therefore, some explanations would be nice. Thanks. Her voice softens. It's as if I'm speaking to two different people. I am so sorry. Am I planning to go off late and there was some trouble with my carry-on? When I finally had my way out of customs, the bus had already left. And my phone ran out of credits. I couldn't return any calls. Damn gone gives me an understanding nod. Imagine my worry when Mika arrived with only, with only your luggage. Although, it is just like Mika to forget a whole person. <laughs> Damn gone laughs wholeheartedly. I didn't, but you know, assume. But the muffled sound of glass tapping sets Nimgon's attention to, uh, gets Nimgon's attention again. They exchange looks. This is really like backseat managering. Oh, managering. Managering? The fuck is wrong with me? So you walked here. Yeah, took me around two hours or some gunk. Two hours of sunburn and I won't even get a tan. Really? It's only taking that long to walk faster. Wow, 
Well, you're full of ice. Just walk faster. My face puts on an unamused smile. Nimgon uh, clears her throat. She brings up the file and starts reading from it. Your old sergeant from the army gave an outstanding recommendation letter. Ah, uh, not this again. It opened up my perspective on the war and helped me mature as a woman. However, five years in the military was more than enough. I made sure to omit the details of my self-taught lockpicking skill and minor trespassing charges I committed in my teenage years. So what if I wandered in abandoned malls and buildings? Like I was hurting anyone. There's no straightforward way to say this. A large percentage of, uh, a percentage of our residents were usurper mercenaries. Our relationships have improved a lot after the war, but some of us might not get along well with government militants. Nimgon was, uh, was I hired just to soothe your connection with the military? The current military and the Sentinel mercenaries have a long-standing history. Initially, both groups united under the same name, the Usurpers, with the militia playing a big part in dethroning the late Empress. After the Usurpation War was over, a group of nobles and their associates split up from the Usurpers to form the new government. Being mercenaries, the rest distanced themselves from the government branches, all the while keeping the name Usurpers. Over time, they grew into a large and independent def uh, defense force of the country. To pair the talking point of the media, they are simply too large to fall. That's often a common um, mistake to make, though, you know? Like a bit of overconfidence. Kind of an... It's an oxymoron of my misusing that word. I don't know. Meanwhile, the military is still trying to reclaim its lost credibility, even though they now operate under a new government structure. All because they were made up of the old noblewomen, uh, noblewomen and noblemen. I hired you largely, largely for your skills, but your presence is very important to our relationship. Nim, uh, Nimgon's gaze softens. Her protruding tusks make it harder to see her smile. You must have heard the rumors of your merger? Rumor has that the official military is looking to fund the Sentinels to combat rebels, but I find that unlikely they're willing to indulge your competitor. I'll neither confirm nor deny it. I can only say it might make your life just a teeny bit more difficult. Nimgon's fingers absentmindedly play with their necklace. This is a good opportunity for our uh, Oregon to interact with the races. As you can see, we keep to ourselves most of the time. Despite being the same country, the Oregons have a tendency to build a strong sense of community among themselves. They live in, uh, they tend to live in uh, closely knit, densely populated neighborhoods. It is isn't unheard of if an Oregon lived in uh, congregate houses all her life. Therefore, while the usurpers were composed of soldiers from different races after the war, uh, after the war, Oregons are the main occupant of these communal houses. Non-Oregons prefer private housing and traveling to work rather than staying in a provided facility. And that's everything I wanted to go uh, to go through with you. Nimgon leaves the file on top of a stack of documents. Oh, we're back to the creepy again. Good. Uh, what interested you about us? Call it casual curiosity. Also call it I need to take a drink. Yeah. Parched throat and dry mouth is not helping with my inability to speak. Well, it's not helping my ability to speak. It is certainly, uh, 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 it is certainly facilitating my inability, though. <laughs> but that doesn't need the yeah, other as a requirement, unfortunately. Off the record, I was also off the game. Off the record. Uh, I'm interested in Oregon's cuisine's appearances. This sounds rude. You have your own types of cuisines. Oh, that's right. I forgot we hired to cook. <laughs> yeah, there's also that. That all, that makes more sense there too. The other one just sounded like I wanted to come here because I wanted to get a better look at you. That just sounds wrong. Nimgon taps her chin. I said Mika was forgetful, but would you look at me? My age is showing in times like these. Says the woman who doesn't look a day over 50. Okay, but what's the aging like for those species? Granted, I always find it hard to guess their age. Or are so different from uh, the nymphs, and they also have a long lifespan. That's vague, but okay. I mean, just long, fine. You know what, Rue? I'd love to sample your food. I'm the only sous chef, though. Uh, Dad, allow I'm allowed to cook what I want. I trust you don't work out with the main cook, then. Let's see what I can do. They say food is something that can be made the same way, but its taste al taste alters depending on who makes it. I see. What? No, you made it the same way, but taste. Of I don't know. 
when you feed people your food, you feed a version of yourself to them. And that's a weird thought, but all right. Uh, I have not thought about it that way. <laughs> Same. It's difficult to replicate food exactly I said on TV or in recipe books. Or the food I had in my childhood. Right. That's why we eat, uh, each dish needs a personal touch. Nimgon gives me an annual smile. You know, Nimgon, I find you so easy to talk to. Thanks, Rue. You said that a lot on the phone, but it's nice to hear it in person. Look at me. My first stand of what I made a friend in a new place. You're wrong? Ellipses. I meant you, but sure, you're wrong too. Does this line not work? When Durong said you were scary, he got me a bit worried. What? Shit, what did I do? If she thought I was scary, she has no idea what's coming. No, that's not what I meant. I, I, I misspoke. <laughs> I was just messing with you, Rue. You should have seen your face. Eh. I've expected Durong to feel that way. She's still a kid compared to us. Wait. How old is she? 22 or something? A knot forms in my belly. Disappointment, perhaps? Drong is younger than I expected. But really, though. Nimgon's face scrunches up again, and I quickly figure being called scary does bother her. By the way, uh, where should I stay? Right. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you're supposed to live here. That, that means quarters. I feel like I dodged a bullet, changing topic at last. We have unisex living areas and same-sex boarding rooms. I was going to assign you to a mall for yourself. But the thing is, there's a newly vacant slot in Durong's room. It belongs to the former assistant chef you're here to replace. Oh? I'll take it. What happened to them? They fell off the roof. I don't know. <laughs> I think your sting with Durong will make me feel much more comfortable. She's proven to be quite reliable and friendly. And I inserted the word quite there, right? <clears throat> I was going to suggest the same thing, Root. Should we ask her first, though? Unless well, you can say no, since she fears me so much. Uh... <coughs> it feels like I'm always towing the line when I'm spe speaking to her. But it won't be a problem at all. <laughs> I just feel that a group of bodies would benefit from someone normal like you, Rue. The previous assistant chef, Dinbo, kept them in check while she was here. All set? I'll have something, uh, I'll someone bring, bring up your luggage. Are they wrong or, uh, query? Query? Well, there's a queue there, so I'm gonna say query. Because no, well, normally you're gonna have a Q with like a hard, like a cuss sound. Normally it wouldn't have a U after it. At least that's what I'm. I'm just say query if I get, <clears throat> uh, should be home right now. Please remember to get your security clearance from Hazari to the front desk too. All right. Thanks for the opportunity, Nimgon. Thank you for taking the opportunity. The sound echoing on the glass surface reminds me of the eel person still in the room watching us, and I, I, I didn't jump that time. <laughs> I totally didn't. She gives me away from behind the glass. It would turn out to be really nice, huh? She is still coming in a few days. Don't know if I'm strong enough for it. Uh, pardon? What? The dark basement is more frightening with no one here with me. Is there really nothing down here? Actually, I don't want anything down here to answer me. Yeah. <laughs> Ignoring the creepy anxiety inside, I make long strides toward the swords of stairs. That feeling of something following me, being close, be close behind. It's like when you're a kid and you're up the stairs in the dark or something at night or going down a hallway towards your room at night and uh, you run and uh, close it real quickly behind you because it's right there behind you, right to grab you just inches away, you know? <clears throat> I mean, uh, the door pulls up with difficulty even though Durham it looked, uh, seemed too effortless. Remember, biceps. I put all my back muscles to use. My footsteps echo loudly as I ascend the darkened staircase. Third floor, huh? Room 304. In the back of my mind, I feel this is start of uh, something... Something... I feel this is the start of something life-changing, and I feel like I need to wrap this up soon because I can't fucking talk. The residents have filled out the corridor over the time I reached my floor. I've never seen so many organs in one place. There were only a handful of them where I came from. Some men on the door are speaking to, to each other. Some of them are drying their hair off with large beach towels. I assume they just had to swim in the pool. When I finally come into the light, they stop what they're doing and watch me. Oregon women and men alike. Unlike most women, most Oregon men have sharp tusks coming down from their upper jaws instead of their lower jaws. Hmm. 
I feel like an object being displayed at a museum, subjected to public scrutiny. Their faces transcribe what I feel. Uncertainty. Hi, I am Rude Sherwati. Just, Rude is fine. Hope you all get along. I use my friendly smile, as if I'm not aware of all this negativity. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the neighborhood. Jorgen smiled and moved closer to me. They introduced themselves and give me some stock welcome lines. I revel in it. All this attention feels good to me, I tell myself. I am making a difference just by being here. Hang on the corridor for a while. Without me noticing, someone has stacked my luggage in front of a door. The door to my room, 304. Uh, thanks for the welcome party. I'm still a one off my trip. I need to get some sleep. I step over to the Oregon circling around me and walk towards the room. Room 304. Hello? Uh, a key I can only knock. Either Query or Duran would be inside, I recall in Nimgon's words. Need a new roomie? <sighs> I like it, but I hate it at the same time. That was a perfect delivery. <laughs> Ugh. Rue. Durong! A familiar face answered the door. Apparently we're roomies now. Durong's eyes softened my luggage, luggage just outside the door. I heard the news. Come in. She was me and whilst grabbing my luggage and to move them. I put her hand on top of hers. She stopped and said she's doing what she's doing to look at me. You don't have to. I want to. Durong scoffs and carries my heavy luggage inside without wobbling while I would have tilted over. <clears throat> I science them to the door. Uh, oh. Well, that's cool. And I see what you mean by community living spaces. Neat. Uh, you know what? Okay, this is a good spot. I'm gonna end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I don't know if I'm gonna... Like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna continue this as an actual series. Or just have this be more of a first taste thing. And, you know, just play it on my own in my off time. Uh, I'll give it some thought. I have enjoyed it so far. It's been kind of interesting. Um, I like the characters, at least. You know, there's that. And it set up a, a neat little world. I also like the background art stuff. It's, it, it's modern, but with that kind of fantasy, like, tint to it. Which is, which is always interesting, you know? To take a fantasy setting and then move it into the modern world. I don't see too much of that. I know it does, I don't know how much of it is out there. But it's always something I've been kind of interested in myself. I just never really try to look for a lot of it. So, here it is, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, once again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in whatever, be it this or something else.